What's going on guys? The Geek-tastic duo is back and we have one very serious question to ask. Is manga anime the saviors to geek entertainment? Ron, I'll let you take it away because you had a very interesting tweet that just made me want to make Expired this video with this you. Video. Oh yeah. yeah, it was a catalyst. Um, no. No, it's not. I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for that. I, so manga and anime is not the savior. You're saying it, it, it can't save no. Western entertainment. No, right? I mean, first of all, I mean, aside from the fact that I'm not the biggest manga or anime fan in the first place, Boo! I am a big anime fan. I grew up on animes, Fist of the North Star, the '86 version, Ghost in the Shell, and then there's some cool shows that I love to watch. Was New Dominion Tank Police, uh, Flames of Rekka. And then, of course, Naruto. And then you get into, you know, Dragon Ball. <laughs> you get into Akira. Well, I mean, there are, there are some exceptions. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say I hate okay, all good. anime. Okay, Clear that out, please. <laughs> you know. Um, you can't be one half of the Geek Tazic Duo if you, don't, if you don't like at least a sliver of anime. I right? do like a sliver of anime. Okay, I'll admit. I, I enjoy a lot of anime movies, for one thing. And a lot of shorter series. I can count the number of anime that I genuinely enjoyed in like one hand, you know? Cowboy Bebop, Trigun, mm -hmm. My Hero Academia, cool. mm -hmm. the original Dragon Ball is really, really good. Yeah, and then Gunsword. Those are the ones that I really, really, really liked a lot. Mm -hmm. Like those, like, they- Berserk, I gotta throw Berserk out there because that was a crazy one. I did Berserk watch the me. Berserk movies, the first mm -hmm. three movies recently, like back to back, and they're actually pretty good but my problem with manga slash anime is i fundamentally don't like the way the japanese tell their stories or the way that they write their characters i don't know what it is and i've had people like every time i tweet about not liking anime on twitter everybody sees that as an invitation to like oh well you just haven't found the right anime and they have a long list of animes that i should watch i'm like i've tried many different anime mm -hmm. many 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 different anime based on recommendations from people and i've always been left either hating it or very underwhelmed the animes that i've ended up loving i've discovered all on my own without any outside influence at all that's yeah. the way I have to discover an anime. Nobody can tell me to watch something. I'm sorry. Some other good recommendations. Death Note, Gantz, and Attack on Titan, just to get that out of the way. <laughs> oh my gosh. You, even you, even you, you couldn't resist. Huh, okay. I, I love anime. Uh, and uh, Okay, so for me, there's like there's hit and miss with some anime i mean for, for some there's some that don't end with the closure that i'd like but i think what i love about anime is just the bizarre and amazing concepts that you always will find there's an anime for every single person in the world except you know me. i mean okay, no, even for... me even me no no even me come on man they got my hero academia right that's yeah, for... you're right you're right you're right they have boxing anime, Haj Hajimino no Ippo, which I love. They have, they have um, basketball, basketball, they have tennis. I'm sure they have, they have tennis. So it's so robust that I, 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 anime is never going to go anywhere. And I think the fact that they're very risky, and of course the production on anime, they'll pre like you, you know you'll get like a season done so fast, and that's just how yeah you know the ease. That's how yeah. just the my, anime my, studios work. You know they my, work my, like my, slaves. To my get issue is with, with with everything that's going on right now with. A lot of Western media, comics, movies, cartoons, whatnot, going super woke and them doing horrible things. A lot of people like jumping to anime and manga. And that's understandable. But I've gotten a lot of, oh, just watch anime. Just watch just watch manga. Like, we can't have that kind of attitude. We can't just give up and let the Japanese do everything for us. I've always been a fan of anime. A lot of people have always been a fan of anime. But they're just like, okay, I'm not enjoying the new Loki show. I'm not enjoying, you know, this he -Man. movie, Black Widow or He-Man. So, okay, let me check out Demon Slayer. Let me check out Promise Neverland. The problem is the stagnation in, in a lot of the Western comic-related entertainment. If we go comic books, if we even go film-related, TV-related, comic book geek entertainment stuff, it, a lot of it leads towards the majority being woke stuff and a lot of it being stuff that's just reboots of reboots of reboots and mm -hmm. we're not getting the originality we get from anime or manga right like there's one manga i i, I just looking up chainsaw man i think it was something like that and a dude mm -hmm. had like a head of the chainsaw so we're crazy stuff but that's like a top selling manga um he had something called dr stone 
and it's like this base it's like an apocalypse right we heard about uh, so many apocalypse stuff so dr stone there's like this flash that went off i think and everyone's like kind of frozen mm -hmm. so but there's some people that aren't frozen like just weird stuff that i'm like that's interesting i'll check that out you know so i think the fact that they're already they're they're a machine they're a hot oil machine that's constantly churning out new material but they're a machine that can do that and the problem is with the west we're looking at stuff that's already going to give us money because a lot of that indie stuff uh sometimes doesn't get the exposure mm -hmm. and it doesn't get the audience that it needs to get and you never hear about it i mean the marketing is it's like just people don't think people don't see it yeah. uh love and monsters a movie that we love so yeah. much i mean that's a great movie but how many people have actually watched it and heard of love and monsters hollywood just slept on that on the promotion of that incredible movie and it know? came out last year during the pandemic right so yeah was it 2020 or it came yeah, out it came so out like 2020 yeah so again you know it's just like you could have missed it I, I so my whole thing is is anime manga the savior I, I don't know if it's the savior but it's just the comfortable second option that's just almost a preferable option but we can't we can't just sit on it though we have to we can't just give up and say oh i'll just watch anime or i'll just read manga you know so here's the thing what what is the west doing right you look at comics what's marvel dc the big two what are they doing to get more readers in I, Nothing. okay so uh, you okay so that's a problem like yeah. if the big guns aren't effectively spearheading a way to attract new readers and if their way to attract new readers is hey we have a new um pacific american hero if we have a new lgbtq friendly hero i don't know if that's the way as opposed to just being and, and here's the thing it's everything is risk why make a new superhero when you can just you know, race swap or gender swap or do whatever or... with yeah with your with your Supermans with your you know Batman's. We already have this talk about the Black Superman, how we like Icon from DC, mm -hmm. who's already set in stone to be a, who he is a Black Superman for all intents and purposes. Instead of having a Superman be black or just to, telling that story, so we're not getting that because. A lot of it is like, well, who's Icon? There's not an audience for Icon, so you know we want we won't do because that. they don't they won't put in the work. Well, that's the thing. If you want to change, and the big two ain't initiating or sparking a new change or anything new to get readers, that's a problem. If everything is going to be another version of Spider-Man, another version of Venom, a uh, uh, Captain America Venom, uh, uh, or let's do a Daredevil, you know, Spider-Man, whatever, like a Carnage, what you're mixing and matching the same stuff already. It's like you get bored of that. At least I did. I mean, I yeah. got to the point where I. As many Spider-Man stories you could tell, I, I just kind of got bored of them. I love Spider-Man. I mean, Into the Spider-Verse as a movie I enjoyed. I'm not going to lie. I do like the live action Spider-Mans, uh, you know. So it's like, uh, you know, it's mm, what else is there, though? What else is a big hitter? When we saw Avengers, right, and we saw Civil War and we saw, um, you know, Infinity War and we saw Endgame, they're all a part of a story that's kind of like in a way like an anime that keeps on going till we get to an end and then it ended and you're like well what's left to take over and it's like eh. trash pretty much and trash if the comics that. ain't creating anything that like if marvel doesn't even have a line that say hey you know what let this will be marvel but we'll have a a, a sub brand right that it's going to be our, our our label that we just do whatever like indie type stuff like crazy stories that are not superhero stuff just crazy stories. I don't know. Just like something that's like Chainsaw Man for all itself, or just something crazy. They don't have that. They're, they're not doing that. And if you look at Image, I don't know. I fell off of Image for a while. If you look at Dark Horse. Dark I don't know. Horse now. You, you saw what recently happened with Dark Horse, right? So what was it? We're not going to do white. Oh, we're no longer white boy comics anymore. What was yeah. That? Or, straight white boy comics. Yeah. Oh, straight. Yeah. Like we're not, you know, so long for straight white boy comics. or I don't know. It's almost like. So you're telling me everything before was just white boy comics? I don't, I don't understand. I thought they were just good stories. Yeah. Hellboy was great. Hellboy was like, what are you saying with that? The Alien vs. Predator stuff they did. What are you saying yeah. with that? I, I can't get behind that as a way to promote a story. That's not going to make me want to so, read this person's story, whoever that, per, whatever yeah. they were promoting. That's not the way to go about it. I, I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I don't get it either. I, I'll, I'll admit that anime does seem to 
to scratch an itch that a lot of people have. It doesn't scratch the itch that I have for the specific kind of stories that I enjoy, but I'll admit there is a market for anime, and I Run, they understand it's just, it. It's not that there's a market, it's that they're dominating the market. Yeah, they're, they're dominating. They're selling everything. They're, they're, they're putting us to shame. Yeah. You know, yeah. My, my answer to that is support indie stuff, or there should be some exposure on indie stuff that's worth the push. But it's never going to get the push unless it just does its own and it just for somehow gets some kind of following. That following could make it animated something and people, and then from there, could just kind of get out from, you know, claw its way to popularity. But that's going to be super hard. Anime is already baked in and it's just a matter of just releasing a new cool theme, you know, that will appeal. There's an there's a, a anime that I saw on Netflix and I watched a couple episodes and I kind of got a little bored, but it was still kind of interesting. It was called Kill La Kill. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing about that, it, it, it's basically a garb of clothing that was like an entity. It had like an eye and a mouth. And like once you put it on, like it gave you all the superhuman abilities. But it was clothing that was alive. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's a cool freaking idea, damn it. <laughs> you know, I didn't finish off the series. It was like, it was still like, ah, uh, but, <laughs> but the fact that they went there, it, it was just, you know, the setting was a school. And it's just like you have these generals within the school. It was just so weird. I'm like, eh. But I like the concept of the clothes that is alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that gives you superhuman abilities. Like, okay, that's like freaking crazy. That's just kind of stuff that Big Two needs to do. Like, we need to just focus on that and get eyes mainstream-wise on these type of stories. But that doesn't happen. Again, a lot of cool-looking comics. Like yours? Um, Galactic, like Rodents of Galactic Rodents of Mayhem, which is a great comic. You guys will see whoever backed it, whoever checks it out. But the people that have reviewed the debut issue, the first issue, they knew what I was doing. They felt the nostalgia. They felt that it was something fresh, but I was having fun with it. And they enjoyed it. And their only gripe was that it wasn't an ongoing comic, that they had to wait for the trade paperback. But again, I mean, I signed with Scout Comics. Scout Comics, you know, they have their way of promoting a certain book. When a certain book comes out, they'll just give a shout out. Hey, check this out. And then keep it moving. Hey, we got another book. Check this out. Keep it moving. It's not like... A company that's like hey check this out we got the next big thing it's just like hey we they're just brandishing as many titles as they can to show variety which i think is awesome but again you might have some great titles that deserve a lot more push that just won't get it and it's just up to you know the creators to do the pushing so like you when you see something good on crowdfunding that's an indie book you know you'll talk about it but mm -hmm. we don't have an outlet or a committed platform of people that have established audiences pushing these type of books uh eric d july or if you see like the quartering they have so many views and they'll land bass and they'll freaking oh my god kevin smith bait and switch and they'll, EBS, they'll get thousands too. of views on that evs they'll get thousands of views on that but are they promoting like an awesome indie book worth the time or is it just like hey check this out check this out check this out you know it's just you know you're going through the they're not doing that. All they're, they're doing not. is complaining. And that's where I've decided that we're going to be different, Gilly. We're going to complain, but we're going to present alternatives. We're going to let people know that there's good stuff out there that they need to check out. Cross your fingers that we eventually build up Geektastic Duo to have a big following and we can get yeah. more stuff out there because that's the way to create a revolution. That's the way to create you know, something big that's moving, that snowball that keeps on rolling. And then you have a lot of people supporting indie comics and you have maybe some companies looking at outside indie comics that have cool followings that are worth a push um and i'm not mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna say there's a lot of you know we heard of what's been coined comic skate right and there's like hey we're the alternative uh i read a lot of these comic skate books mm -hmm. that are from the heavy hitters of, of of the movement and a lot of the stuff is weak soft yeah, yeah i'm just being is. honest you mm -hmm. know it's just more hey get on the hype hey you hate big two well, come check this out. Okay, I'll check this out. It's like, nah, yeah, that's, I like it. Mm, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no. But that's a problem. You just want to circle and keep this little movement going, but the stories aren't great. No. They're no. subpar at best, and it's just trash. <laughs> so yeah. you don't get like that, that revolutionary, you know. If people like EVS would do more, I, I, I don't know. I just don't think he does enough. And he, do, he doesn't have to. Well, you know, he's not a, only just him. He's a creator. He did his time, right? Yeah. He's making his money. He got his cool cyberfuck thing, getting action figures done out of like doing it out of the status quo. So that's great. 
but there's a lot of other plat people out there with platforms that aren't comic book creators but will ridicule and criticize stuff yeah. that are coming out of Netflix yeah. or out of you know the big two. Yeah, but they're not interested in fixing the problem. They're only interested in making money off of the problem. There you go, buddy. That's capitalism. What do you want? They hey, they're gonna make money from that. That's great. Are they trying to make the situation better? No, no they're, they're just they're, complaining. They're serving That's, their they're bottom compla- dollar. They're, they're complaining it. because it, it gets hate clicks, because it gets monetized, right. because it gets some views, it gets some great. subscribers, all of that. Great. But does that yeah. do anything overall? No. no. And that's why anime keeps on kicking ass, and that's why manga will keep on kicking ass, and that's why the Japanese will dominate the entertainment spectrum. And we'll be seeing in the next shift, the next couple years of Hollywood, remember those comic book movies? It's going to be manga adaptions. It's going to be anime adaptions. You watch, because they're already sold, and they know people are going to go to the movies and watch them. You're going to see. <laughs> you have Martin Scorsese. like He hated the comic book movies. Well, guess what? It's going to be anime live actions is what we're going to be getting. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, just, that's where it's going. I mean, I, the one one that I did see that I loved was uh, Alita Battle Angel. That's that's uh, based on anime. And I'm, that's a great movie. I love that movie, by the way. That's so. great. I don't mind seeing more of those. I mean, Hollywood will make their money and it, it, it'll, it'll just be. Yeah, but I is. don't want Hollywood to do it because they're going to, I mean, they're going to mostly ruin them. Well, they I mean, didn't ruin the Alita Battle but... Angel. They didn't, yeah, so there'll be some that will still churn out some 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 gems. Uh, but the overall answer here to how to keep manga or anime from being the savior, so to speak, is to just spotlight what we have, what we have working. If the big two ain't working and people with a platform are making their money, getting their views on trashing the big two, why don't you use that platform to spotlight an indie comic renaissance? And we're talking about indie comics that are worth it as far as storytelling yes. and as far as artwork. Yes. If we can have that in a religious fashion done, like, you know, consistently, of there could be a boom to cut. It could be a boom, you know, that can happen. But it ain't going to happen if people just keep on doing what they do. But that's America for you. Hey, if this is working for me, okay, everything's the ego, 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 mm-hmm. ego, ego, ego. Yeah, Japanese anime, and uh, we'll just hey, we'll put this out. We'll put this out. If they have an ego, I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe the big the big wigs are, are having their dinner, and they're like, man, these Westerners are just eating our. They're eating, just eating they, it up, yeah. They're eating up whatever we give them. But hey, we never see that because it, it's not about egos. It's just putting out a new product. What's it? And they just like clockwork. It's like a machine. If we can't, you know, spotlight any good stuff, it's for naught. Yeah, do you want to spotlight anything today? Well, we should spotlight something. We should spot something. We need to. Galactic uh, Rodent, some mayhem. mayhem. Check that out. Scout Comics. And not only that, follow me because I will have Volume 1 going and I will have other stuff. Check out Ron's Paragon Prime. You know what? I'm going to spotlight something right now that I'm reading. Uh, Shadow Sentry. I had backed it a while ago and I forgot about it. And then I kind of wrote it off. Oh, it's probably just another, you know, 90s inspired comic with crappy writing. Like, eh, whatever. I'm actually really surprised how decently written this is. That's pretty good. Yes. You it's throw a recommendation. Let me throw a recommendation. Hold on. Yeah. It's called Long Harbor. Ooh, yes. All right. You got Check it. You that got out. It. Check that out. It's uh, Iconic Comics. But the same people comics. who did uh, Common America, which is one of yeah. my favorites. Long Harbor, Lovecraftian type stuff. Looks really cool. Um, so people with a platform, make it available for for spotlighting indie creators because we are the answer. Indie creators will be the answer. If the big two ain't getting it done, they don't want to bring new readers to read comics. Their way ain't working, man. Mm-hmm. The sales already show you. People loving mangas. People loving the anime. So what we need to do is just get new stories and follow those stories and build those stories and franchise those stories. And yeah. you'll see you'll see some good to come. Till next time, catch us on the next video. Geek out. Geek out, guys.